很辛苦的准备我带来的投影片，所以还是要用英文发表，可能比较，才可以发挥它的功能。This talk is about applying social network analysis to、um, the relationships of monks in Chinese history, and the basic problem that、um, I had、um, that I was trying to answer is. We do not really have a good overview history of Chinese Buddhism, especially not in Western languages. The most comprehensive histories we have of Buddhist Chinese Buddhist history are written in in Japanese,、um, but the English and the French literature on that topic is really not that good. The last time someone tried to write a whole overview of the history of Chinese Buddhism was in 1964. There was a book by Kenneth Chen, and no one really has attempted an update so far.、Um, since since that time, a lot of studies, of course, have happened, and a lot of people have focused on certain persons like Zhi Yi or Fa Zhang or Zhen Zhang Tao Shi. People have focused on certain texts like Jing Gan Jing, Liu Tan Jing, the Lotus Sutra. They have focused on certain time periods like the Tang Dynasty, like. Venerable Ifa's um, venerable um, teacher Stanley Weinstein,、um, or on places, Mount Uto is Mount、um, Uta is especially popular,、um, and so are some of the other the main the famous mountains. Now,、um, what are the conditions for a macro history of Chinese Buddhism?、So、what do we need to know, and how to? We need to organize our knowledge, and this is where social network analysis enters. And we have created some some data、um, a couple of years ago. We have marked up all the biographies of eminent monks. So the Chinese characters that you see here, those are collections of biographies of eminent Chinese monks. And in these biographies, a lot of data is concerned, is is contained, and who knew whom in those. Biographies, and we have、um, formalized that information, and that yields a network with about 6,500 actors and then、uh, 13,000 connections between them. This all this data is openly available. I think the slideshows are distributed somewhere. You can get them from the、um, from an interface that we have built, and、uh, you can also download them from from my website. So this is how the network looks like.、Um, these are the 6,500 actors and the connections.、Um, but our data is very biased. It's biased in the sense that we have a lot of information about the first thousand years of Chinese Buddhism, and we have very little information about the time after, say, the year 1,000. So much data that we have is、um, belongs only to that to that lower part of that central component in the network. But anyway, here it is. Look and behold, this is Chinese Buddhist history. Who would have thought it looks like that?、Right? Um, what are we doing? What are we going to do now? The most important actors in these networks are. How would it even? How would? How? How is this being assessed? In social network analysis,、um, there are different ways of measuring importance in a network, and this is something which humanists, like historians and people who take social studies, can learn from social network analysis. There are different measures to figure out what in a network is central. There's, for example, degree centrality, which is relatively easy to understand. Um, if a node has many connections with other nodes, that means that this node, that this actor, is probably more important than other actors.、Right? And if an actor has only one or two connections, it's perhaps less important. There is also betweenness centrality and closeness centrality, eigenvector centrality, and I'm going to show you an example where this comes into play.、Um, this is a part of an, a part of the network which、um, <coughs> shows. The, about the time period of the Sui Dynasty, around the year 600 or so, and you can see that there is a large、um, green node in the center. This is Sui Wenyi. 
Ted Fuel indeed is very prominent in those uh, biographies. He has a lot of connections with many people. And then there is his son, Yang Wen, uh, So Yang Di. And he seems to be a bit less prominent. He's less often mentioned in the biographies as having interacted with other people. This size, the size of the node here, is determined by the number of connections with other nodes. Okay? Now, if we change a measure of centrality, if we change this to betweenness centrality, which um, is the measure on how many shortest path a node is. A node is the more important, the more information that flows through a network has to traverse to that particular node. So it's very important that a node is on the shortest path. This is something that social network analysts find out back in the 70s. And this is an application for the humanities. And uh, here you see that the roles are reversed. Because um, the sun, so Yang Di is more tied into the general network of Chinese Buddhist history. It is he, his connections are on more of the shortest paths between all nodes. He, according to between the centrality, has actually a more important role than his father. Okay? So if you want to balance these two important people, then you have to give it to the sun to be more important for the transmission of knowledge in the network. This is um, the whole network layout in a circular layout according to degree centrality. So the people at 12 o'clock and 5 past 12 or so, those are the people with the most connections. And this is why the hatching um, effect, this kind of renaissance drawing effect, is a natural um, result from this, kind of, from this type of order. Now, the type of people that come out on top when we measure for top degree centrality are mainly translators and patrons, which is not really very surprising because translators and patrons are mentioned together. It is those people that form cliques, it is those people that form connections, that work together, that collaborate. Right? So the people that have a lot of connections with each other in the history of Chinese Buddhism, of course, are naturally patrons and translators. If you lay out the network in a circular fashion, according to between the centrality, you, a quite different picture emerges. Um, now, the top, the top people, so again, I'm looking at 12 o'clock, 12, 12, 5 or so, the top people now are not translators and patrons, but important figures in the history of Chan Buddhism. Why is that? Remember that, in, according to between the centrality, what matters is whether an actor lies on a number of shortest paths. So this person is important for transmitting knowledge throughout the network. And as we know, one of the big important changes in Chinese Buddhism happened when Buddhism formed a lineage system in the 7th, 8th, 9th century, where the idea between teacher and student was formalized into sort of lineages. And this fact, the transition of Buddhism into um, schools defined by lineage, is borne out by this effect in the network that if you measure between the centrality, um, the top people that come out are actually Senmans, which are defined as being members of a certain lineage. So for example, Matsu Dawi, the person with the highest degree of betweenness centrality. Um, he is a very, very famous and noble point in the history of Chinese Buddhism, and the network sort of bears that out. Here is another way of zooming into a certain part of the network. This is a network that starts around 350 and goes on to about 550, and you can see I have colored the nodes of different ruling houses differently. So you can see the transition between the Liu clan and uh, the Xiao clan, which ruled the southern Qi the southern and, the, and, the, and the southern Liang. So you can see how um, important patrons in Buddhist history change over time. <coughs> this network of three important people, colored yellow, we'll look at in a, in a minute. First I want to show you 
um, an output that I made for a friend who was interested in Zhi. Zhi is a very important monk in the Sui dynasty, the founder of Tiantai Buddhism, of course. And he was interested in his social background according to to this network. And it, it is very easy now to output um, a personal network in two degrees. So the people that Zhi know and the people that knew the people who Zhi know. And it's very easy, or at least easier now for my friend, to figure out um, who he, who Zhi, according to the information that we have in the thousand trunks, has interacted with. So, um, of course, the, the big um, donors that we have met already, the big patrons of Buddhism, Su Yang Yi and uh, Su Wen Yi, appear. But there is also important to see the connections to his to Zhi's students and, and his teacher, Hui Si and uh, Hui Ming, and, and sort of there is a whole um, array of important other um, monastics who and, and this um, connection with Zhu and something which is not usually um, very apparent. So it's, it's possible to focus on one person if you are researching the uh, history of Chinese Buddhism and look at his, mostly, most of them are our monks, um, social network. Now let's uh, look at a different network. This is a network of three important Chinese Buddhists, Lao An, Huiyuan, and Kumarativa, the Indian monk. All three were involved in translating sutras. Um, Kumarativa was one of the most important translators, and Lao An and Huiyuan were organizing and helping with um, translating sutras in various ways. Now, a question that arises, these three people, they were roughly contemporary. And we know that they were very important. You don't need social network analysis to, to tell me that they were important. But who of the people around them knew all three of them? And it turns out that social network analysis can easily be asked such questions. You can easily now find the monks in that network who knew Daoan and Kuryo and Kumarachiva, all three of them. Presumably, these people would be important for the information flow in that time, right? They have met all three of them, and they might have acted as intermediaries, because, as it turns out, of course, Huiyuan is Daoan's student, so they have met. But Huiyuan and Kumarajiva and Huiyuan and Daoan, they have never met in person. They have corresponded, Huiyuan and Kumarajiva, but they have never really met in person. So it was, it's important to find out um, who acted as a go-between between their, their cliques. And then from that, um, one can also try to build um, dynamic networks. I cannot show you this now because I, I'm not connected to the, directly connected to the, to the projector, but um, I could press a button and this network could now play out in real time. And that would be nice if you have a class, for example, and you want to teach about the history of Chinese Buddhism, and you can see how these networks move through time and who becomes connected to whom and then after who passes away before who else. So this is a way of looking at Chinese Buddhist history with a method that is usually um, explored and developed in social science and social network analysis. So thanks very much for your attention. This is all for today.